ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه واله وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد قال الله تعالى في كتاب المجيد فرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد كان لكم في رسول الله اسوه حسنه في رسول الله اسوه حسنه صدق الله العظيم برادر سيستر الاسلام السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وعليكم السلام ورحمه الله i'm going to paraphrase the arabic portion of the khutbah indeed all praises to god almighty we praise him we ask for his help we seek refuge in him from our inner soul and bad deeds whom so ever god almighty guides no one can astray whom so ever does not guide no one can guide a bear witness no one is worthy of worship except god almighty muhammad is his slave servant messenger peace and blessing upon him and his followers the believers have a conscious awareness of god they do not accept total submission to god almighty a mankind have a conscious awareness of god He has created you from a single soul from that soul he made many pairs especially be dutiful to those whom you have mutual rights indeed god is all watching <coughs> oh mankind oh believers have a conscious awareness of god almighty speak nothing but the truth so he can rectify your deeds he can forgive your sins best among you who ever follows god almighty and muhammad peace be upon him As for today's khutbah, I have chosen a part of ayah from Surah Ahzab, Surah number 33, verse number 21. Part of the ayah, "Lakat kana lakum fi Rasulillah." We have heard this ayah many, many times. Indeed, it's fine. It's like a lie. Indeed, is we have a best example, best model for us is Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's life. We have heard this ayah many times. and indeed his life is best for us i'm just going going to talk about one aspect zakal khair that's that's good zakal one aspect of that sira uswa the model the life the example of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the aspect is freedom of expression in islam how did he entail how did he act upon how did he convey that message of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how does Muslims are supposed to adhere to the principle of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam how did he act upon it it is a freedom of expression in Islam i have right i have choice i have to explain something you have same right god given right to explain your side how does islam entail encourage discourage what's the status of freedom of expression in islam now i believe we speak on muslims pretty much on every subject but this is one of the subject that you know what muslims suppress if it is a female she shouldn't say anything uh if it is male youngster they shouldn't talk if it is alim giving speech something nobody should speak if some scholar talking don't ask question so there are things that we have built in in the culture and the language and the style and we adhere to them as a norm of islam and they come out as a part of islam and then when we have this suppression at individual level that's manageable but once that individual gets a power or authority to start thrusting is a her ideology or mentality and try to forcefully suppress other people's expression and then you and i know what muslim ummah is going through right now one of the crux of the matter is my opinion is right i am right my sheikh is right 
my scholar is right, my imam is right, my fatwa is right, my fatwa is right, my beer is wrong enough, my hijab is wrong enough, my culture is better than yours, my, 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 at the end of days, I, I, I. And Islam has nothing to do with this. Because this is not a sunnah of Mormon, a sunnah of Muslim. To the contrary, this is a sunnah of shaitan, when he said, Ana min al-nar wa huwa min al I am from the fire, and he is from the clay. For us, there is no I. For us, that Allah has given us some time and place here, that we do our best and move on. This is the smallest glimpse of life. The best one has yet to have to come, never ending one. Eternity lasts forever. So my job in this transit to give my best shot, that's it. To the best of my ability. Only way I can do best when I have a capacity to understand other person's opinion. When I have a capacity to interpret and this, you know, encourage the dialogue. And encourage and find out what's the common ground we have. We all know the Muslim, 1.9 billion, the fastest growing religion in the world. There's not a single Muslim who does not believe in God Almighty. There's not a single Muslim who does not believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's not a single Muslim who does not believe in Kaaba, Baytullah, Haramain, right? There's not a single Muslim who does not believe in Quran, being one book from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Malaika amantu billahi wa laika te yukutu mihi rusuli wa liyom il akhir yukadli khayli wa shurri. Everybody believes this Imaniyat, the beliefs, then what's the problem? Why are we still fighting? We're 57 plus Muslim countries and we're still fighting as I and you and I are sitting here. We're blessed to sit here and we talk as while we're talking for the past 5 minutes, 10 minutes, somewhere a Muslim already died at the hand of Muslim. The both sides are saying, Allah, talk about Takbir. What are we doing? With one Allah. One Muhammad Rasulullah, one Kaaba, one Quran, one Imam. What is the issue? The issue is that my opinion is better than yours. My shade is better than yours. And we have titles. May Allah bless all the scholars, those who passed away. May Allah grant them Jannatu for those Ameen Summa Ameen. Those who are alive, may Allah guide them on the right path. Those who are coming after us, may Allah make us a tajariya. Ameen Summa Ameen. I don't have any beef with any scholars. But think about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Bani Israel, Surah number 17, verse 36. La taqful ay salaka bihil. Do not take things for granted. Inna sama wal basara wal fawaid. Allah will ask you how did you use your wisdom, your eyesight. How did you use it? Your aql, faham. Allah will ask you for that. How did you use it? We have titles in Muslim countries. A shaykh or shaykh. Al-Shaykh al-Islam, Al-Hujjatullah. Al my question to you and myself is, when Quran challenges to use your aql, let me ask you this question. Who is the Shaykh al-Shaykh and Shaykh al-Al-Shaykh? Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For whom the Quran says in Surah, uh, Surah Nisa, When you see Rasulullah faqad ata Allah, Kul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah faqta bi'un yuhibbukum Allah. Surah Al-Imran, Surah Izzab, Lakat kana lakum fi Rasulullah wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's the best example. Let me ask you a single example. Forget the authentic hadith. Forget the mozu hadith. Forget the zaif hadith. Shad hadith. Forget everything. Give me a history from a non-believer, a non-Muslim, an atheist agnostic that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ever used the word as Shaykh al-Islam. So who are we? Where are we? Why is this time being created? Why? What is the purpose? Well, sister, this is something that we have to come into grip. If somebody says something about deen, First question, brother and sister, humbly, where is it in the Quran? We have a Quran. This is the only modes of any Nabi, any Rasul still alive and active with us in the many people's heart, which is Quran. From Muhammad Rasulullah. Brother and sister, where is it in the Quran? What is the context? It's a hadith. Where is it in the hadith? If it's not there, then you can Say it ten times you want to. You can publish a book you need to. You defend your thesis if you need to. You stand up, do whatever you need to. But don't say this is deen. Don't say this is Islam. Islam is only what comes from Muhammad Rasulullah through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other than that is your opinion, alhamdulillah. Your opinion as good as you interpret it, as you perceive it. My opinion is as good as I perceive it. One day we're both going to answer in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is our opinion? But when it comes to crux of Islam, you are my responsibility. Brother, is this in the Quran? No. Is this in Muhammad Rasulullah? No. So why are we doing it? Why oh, this is good? 
So you know what's good? Muhammad Rasulullah didn't know what's good? And is this ask to follow you or follow Muhammad Rasulullah? Is his Usma is better than yours? This is the thing that we need to start filtering. This is the stuff that we need to start filtering. Somebody say, brother, is this in the deen? Yes, if it's not deen, yes, we have scientists, we have uh, attorney, we have uh, engineer, we have a doctor, we have all of the knowledge. Yes, many of us, alhamdulillah, blessed with that knowledge. But that knowledge has nothing to do with the deen. The moment I say this is deen, where is in the Quran? Where is the life of Muhammad? If it's not there, brother, this is not deen, it's your own opinion, sure. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi did encourage that, remember? The incident in Medina about the Tamar, about the dates. You know better what's the matter of dunya. Hey, sure, it's your dunya. Give, up, give your thesis, defend it. But when it comes to deen, don't marry it. The deen is pure and pristine. And it's been there from Adam and Islam to Muhammad Rasulullah. Nothing new needed. When the Quran says, It is complete, it is complete. So please stop bringing new things in there. So we have a lot more in common when it comes to Iman. When it comes to Quran, when it comes to Kaaba, when it comes to Muhammad, why can't we come in? Because when we come to this interpretation, we suppress the opinion. You don't need to say anything. I'm valid. I, I, what I say, no, 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 no. Listen. Encourage the dialogue. Talk about it. Definitely. But that's how we filter the moment we have one criteria, which is what Quran. Let's talk about your opinion, brother. Let's talk about your opinion, sister. Is it no Quran? Maybe you, you know, interpret differently. The other scholars interpret differently. Fine, it's your opinion, Alhamdulillah. Father, you lead Salat. Brother, I have heard people saying that if you if you pray Salat, you no, know, forget the hurt. In 2009, Allah blessed me, I went for Hajj with my parents. And the, we had a cousin who came from England, UK, for Hajj. So we asked him, we said, where is your Muallam, the person who brought you here? Can we meet him? He said, he does not come in the Kaaba. He does not come in a Haram. So why? He prays his salat in the mosque in, in this hotel. And he says he cannot pray salat behind the Wahhabi in Kaaba. This is in 2009, a person who brought the Hujjad, who brought the pilgrim from UK, England to Medina, and he's telling people, go do the Hajj and sit in a hotel. My salat is battle in a haram. This is the deen that we have. This is the interpretation we have. Some scholar. Some sheikh somewhere said this. My question is that when Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa directly throw, told in Surah Toba, Oh Muhammad, do not stand up for the Manafiqeen. When he led the Salat of Manafiq, Rayus al Manafiq, right? Abdullah bin Abayy. He was instructed that don't lead Salat for Manafiqeen, don't stand up for there. My question to you and I again. In the Sama or Basar or Fa'ad, Akal Farm, Allah will ask you how do you use it. We use it the best way when it comes to dunya. The house, the car, the wife, the spouse, the children, the school, anything you name, your degree, your PhD, your clothes. When it comes to dunya, yeah, he knows better, he got a longer beard than me. Yeah, his Mahfid is good, his Arabic is good. Really? Use this. My question to you is that. Give me a single example again. Forget the hadith, because you'll never find in the hadith. Forget the Mozu hadith. The things that are made up, forget those. Give me a reference from that. History. History has written a lot, left and right, wrong and right. You know that. Give me an example from the history that Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu stood up and said, you know what? After this, this person, I'm not going to lead his salat al janazah because he's manafi. He's a hypocrite. Did he ever? So, whose life we follow him? Who do we follow? This is Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you know and I know there are 300 munafiqeen that walked away right in front of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we know if 10 people walk away we will know who walked away from here but despite of that Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever refused for janazah inclusiveness, dialogue, discussion the outside forces, Islamophobia, the hatred, all of the stuff is going to force us one way or other to stand up for our religion, to stand up for our values, to stand up what we believe in. But only way we can stand up when our house is in order. Freedom of expression, you say what you want, I will listen. And the binding authority, the final conclusion is the Quran. That's where we're going to come back to. You know, if it's not in Quran, it's not in the Hadith, not life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Guess what? It's your interpretation. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless all Muslims. Ameen. Summa Ameen. Move on. Let me give you an example from Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
محمد رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم میں خطیجہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ خطیجہ انکل حکیم بن اعظام رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ he was in Medina in Kaaba because again the Kaaba was at that time the worship was done idols and other things were there people used to worship a lady come and brought her 10 year old child and she in the in, uh, in uh, the gathering somehow she misplaced she lost her child and she went back she couldn't find the child she went back to her family and she said I lost the child the child was part eventually and end up with Akim and Azam who is uncle of Khatija and when Khatija married Muhammad the child was given a gift to Khatija the child ended up in Muhammad's house Meantime, the family tried to start looking and locating. Remember that slavery was at peak at that time, that culture. So they start looking and trying to find out where the child goes. Somebody said the child is at the Muhammad house. So they said, oh, what, this guy is a gentleman, he's honest. Yeah, he's honest. Asadu Amin, right? How many of us have the basic quality, Asadu Amin? Ask your colleague. Leave a camera in your office and then ask somebody to give an opinion the next morning. Look at it, what people think about you, what people say about you. Look at your schedule, when you show up, when you come back. And think about it, the very front, first quality of Sadiq al -Amin, before even Nubu'ah, before the revelation. But that's what we need to ponder and think about. But Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu somebody said, no, Sadiq al -Amin is trustworthy, he will tell us what it is. You know what, whatever money he paid, we'll double it, let's go meet him. The father of the child and uncle of that child come to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, we are not in the business of slavery and our child was not up for slavery. It just got lost and ended up in your house. Whatever money you paid, we will double that money. We'll pay you whatever it is. We'll take the child back. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, I don't want to any money, but I will ask the child. He's been here for long enough, but I will ask him if he says he wants to go with you, he's free to go. But if he says, I don't want to go, I will not force him because he's been living long enough with me. I don't want to hurt his feeling. That's what? Child was called. He says, Zaid bin Haris, do you know who are these two people? He says, yeah, Ya Rasulullah, I do. Who are they? He's my father, he's my uncle. Oh son, they're here to take you home. You're free to go, son. Father says, Zaid, let's go. Zaid said, oh my dad, I'm not going home with you. Dad said, what? Yes, I'm not going with you. And then question is asked, why, O oh son, what do you see in this old man that you don't see in your own father and your uncle? Old man is Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Zaid said, I cannot, Wallah, Billahi, I cannot tell you what I see in Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life, but I'm not going with you, O oh dad. I want to stay here. I love him more. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu went to Masjid and gave khutbah. He said, from today onward, you're going to call him Zaid bin Muhammad. He's a son of Muhammad. Then I come in Surah Azab, Surah number 33. He said, no, call the people with their own biological parents. So he reverted back to Zaid bin Harsa. That Zaid bin Harsa was a child. Stayed with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam arranged his marriage with Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa cousin, Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. The marriage took place. Things didn't work out. Zainab from the Christ tribe, elite class, whatever reason, things didn't work out. And Zaid come to Muhammad and said, Ya Rasulullah, I want to divorce her. Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I want to divorce her. Asked him, Zaid, try to reconcile, work it out. Zaid asked, Ya Rasulullah, think about the child who left his parent, who stood with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that kind of tough situation and he is in debt to Muhammad sallallahu the ayah in Surah Aizad say Allah and Allah's Rasul has an anam on him, a blessing on him that child say Ya Rasulullah you're asking me not to divorce her is this a wahi from Allah a revelation from Allah or is this your personal opinion Ya Rasulullah Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said no there is no wahi in your matter it is just my opinion there is not a single opinion for Muslim in this world which is valid than Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's opinion. Because walking, talking Quran, he is the Quran. He's a practical walking, talking Quran. There's no other opinion valid for us compared to Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa opinion. He gave his own opinion to his own son. And then 
son said, if this is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rasulullah, with all due respect, I want to divorce him. But Muhammad said, oh come on, I took care of you. What's wrong with you? That's how you're going to speak with me? That's what you think? No. He did divorce and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ended up marrying the Zainab bin Jashka radiallahu ta'ala anha. She's from a Mahati Mu'mineen. Why did that happen to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? There are so many other reasons. Go read Surah Isa. There are other reasons as well. But one of the reasons is that example was set. The best example set by the best people at the best time in the best book in the Quran documented till the day of judgment. It is in Surah Azab, Surah number 33, verse number 32, 36, 34. <laughs> Read all of those. It's there. Allah has documented says when it comes to opinion, listen, entertain the dialogue, and then you make the decision. How do we do that? When do we do that? None of us. No, I'm right. I know, no, no, they're listening. Oh, I'm better. I'm Sheikh Bashallah. I know better. What is this? There's no I. Have you ever thought about it when you die? Nobody will say, the doctor so and so, the lawyer so and so, the engineer so and so, can you pass me the PhD guy? Can I buy him? No. Brother, can you pass me a body? Second body? A body. This is just a body. It's nothing. It's beautiful when we are taqwa, when you have understanding, when you have respect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah's messenger and when you have respect of each other Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu never refused a janaza for a manafiq and hypocrite but he said if somebody he asked for the person who was in debt, who was makruz, who has to give a loan to somebody he asked does he owe anybody money and Sahaba said yes ya Rasulullah and Nabi sallallahu said if he is in debt then I have to think about his janaza why? Because he owes somebody something. Manafix matters directly between Allah, but this makruz, the debtors matters between somebody else. I can't be part of this. You can lead salat, I won't lead salat. And Sahabi got up, Ya Rasulullah, I will pay his debt, but I don't want him to be I'm not blessed with yours leading the salat of janaza. You lead salat of janaza, I will pay his debt. This is our deen. Respect each other. And entertain dialogue, talk to each other, love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no scholar. Again, I have nothing against with any scholar. Allah bless them all. They have done research, they have spent their entire life, they have compiled book for us. Still we can read and we still can sit at one table. Imagine if we have to do research. May Allah bless them all. But we have a responsibility to entertain the dialogue. We're not doing it. Our job was out there having dialogue with an atheist, agnostic, have interfaith dialogue, and interfaith dialogue. We're not out there. We have to worry about intra-faith first. Brother, can I pray behind him? Can I pray? No. Get out of there. You have a lot to do out there. Allah will ask you what you have done. Especially this is the best time. People come to us. They challenge us. They come on our face. They point at us. They pick on us. They chase us in the parking lot. They pick on Twitter, the Facebook. Any mechanism they use, they're coming after us. Alhamdulillah. I don't need to go there. Bring it on. Please, let's talk. But how? When? When I'm standing firm with my faith and my belief, when I believe this is my ummah, when I believe this is my brother and my sister, when I believe we are part of one, and over one DNA, Ashadu Allah, Ilaha Allah, Ashadu Allah, Muhammad, Abdu, Rasulullah. When we come back with that realization, we don't need anything. But this is the army. Look at 57 Muslim countries. I don't want to name many of you and belong to those countries. What is the issue? Where's the Yahud? Where's Nasara? Where's atheist? Where's agnostic? Where's best? Killing who? A Muslim. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. Oh, brother, it's conspiracy. Really? This was the theme. This was the faith of Muslim. Never been used by somebody else. Why are we being used now? Because we don't have faith. We don't have trust. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us wisdom and vision. I'm going to give you one more example. Aksha radiallahu ta'ala anha His daughter, you know, Baridha radiallahu ta'ala anha His slave girl got married to Mughis Same incident happened Question was asked, Ya Rasulullah is this wahi? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, not wahi They divorced At the Battle of Badr, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam put his tent, the Khayma At one place, said, this is where we're going to use as a launch pad This is the place we're going to attack the, the non-believers, the army A Sahabi come, Ya Rasulullah, you sure that's what he wants? Yeah, what's wrong with it? See, Rasulullah, we're local people, we know where the terrain is, you know where the water is, we know where the back alley is, you know how to retreat. I don't think this is the right place. Is this a way or your opinion? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, it's my opinion. See, Rasulullah, then this is not the right place. Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu said, yes, Munzal bin Ahbab, radiallahu ta'ala, is right. Rip off this camera, rip off this tent, and put where he wants to put, because he knows better local terrain, local mechanism. Let him lead.
this is our deen of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us. And this is what came from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's what the example was set. Umar Rajallah Ta'ala said that he's going to set the dowry. A lady got up, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah number 2, verse 236. She said, what? Ala qadrihi. The based on the, his ability, oh Umar, why are you going to set one dowry for everybody? Don't do it. Umar said, oh, your Amirul Mu'mineen is wrong. That sister is right. Where was that sister, by the way? Where was she? In parking lot? No. In cinema? No. Where was it? In Harda? No. In the master. Talking to Amirul Mu'mineen directly. Say, oh my, Amirul Mu'mineen, Quran says, based on his ability, how can you set one? He said, she is right, I'm wrong. She was in the master. 51% of our sisters don't get involved board of directors in the masajid and say, no, uh, mashallah, brother, you, you stay at home. Really? The 51% of our population just depleted when it comes to decision making for our future. These are the children of our future. They don't make part of no decision, none whatsoever. That's may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us wisdom, vision, strength, and we come back. And we have freedom of expression to the point that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi set the example. The Umar bin Khattab set the example. We love each other for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look beyond the facial expression. We look beyond the dialogue and discussion. We look beyond the dress code. We just love each other for sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah give us wisdom, vision, strength. Then we come back with one DNA. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Wa ashadu anna Muhammad an abduhu wa rasooluh. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna Allah wa laika tu yusalluna lal nabi. Ya ayu al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallam. Quick reminder that when you come in the masjid, please try to cover this side as much as you can. We've been reminding each other for a long time, we need to, because when the khutbah starts, that's part of the salah, not because I'm giving, but that's what it is. During Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam time, there was a great Sahabi, Abu Dalla radiallahu ta'ala, he was made in charge of Yemen later on to learn deen. At that time, the commander-in-chief, the in charge, the governor, was a lead person when it comes to deen and dunya. He knows everything because he has to do his help. So it's a knowledgeable scholar, Muslim, Sheikh, at that time, right? So, it was knowledge of a Sahabi of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Sallallahu was giving khutbah. Abu Dalla asked Abu Khidri, another Sahabi. Nabi Sallallahu recited the ayah. He asked, says this Makir Madni. They didn't answer. Three times, four times, didn't answer. And then after the matter finished, the Prophet called both of them and said, What happened? What you guys are doing? See, Rasulullah was asking, Is this ayah in Makkah, Madni ayah? And Abu Khidri said, Ya Rasulullah, I don't want to answer. I'm sorry if he hurt his feeling. I apologize, I ask for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from him. But I didn't want to answer because you were talking and it's a khutbah, you told us not to talk. Well, he said, Yes, Abu Darda, you have nothing from this Jummah. Except the way talk that you did, the loud talk you did. Yes, Khidri is right. You shouldn't talk to each other when khutbah starts. So please turn off your cell phones. Try to move in this direction. Because when you're walking that way, you're telling somebody move. Or at least somebody has to move. Or somebody has to look at you. Somebody has to talk about it. So at least let's comply and act upon whatever we know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us wisdom, vision and strength. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنِيَا عَسَرَ طَوَّا فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَسَرَ طَوَّا فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَسَرَ طَوَّا فِي الْآخِرَةِ رَبَّنَا عَزَرَمْنَا فُوَسَنَا وَإِلَّمْ تَرْخِلَنَا وَتَرْخَمْنَا لَنَا كُنَنَّا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ اللَّهُ مِنِ نَسَلُكُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ كُلِّهِ وَنَوْزُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرْبِ كُلِّهِ يَعْمِينَ ثُمَّ عَمِينَ يَا رَبُ